This is pretty fun to play with, actually. How's it going, guys? You Ottawa Scotty here. Today we're talking about a pretty interesting topic. We're talking about the Fletcher Munson curve. We're playing around with some fun toys here. Let's have a look. We've got a um, audio signal generator here and that's hooked up to an oscilloscope. We've also got a an organ speaker here. So that's the test apparatus as as you could say that we're using today. I don't know if I mentioned it but we're talking about the Fletcher Munson curve. This is going to be a first video that I do in a series of videos all about the human ear. It's a very interesting topic and I hope you guys find it interesting as well. I use these concept concepts all the time in my line of work. So let's get right into this. This this uh you can get go down the rabbit hole with with this kind of stuff really really easily. But we're going to try and maybe just go down the rabbit hole just a little bit. The Fletcher Munson curve was discovered in the 30s with the advent of the telephone. The Bell Telephone Company has a famous lab called um, Bell Labs. Uh, if you don't know anything about Bell Laboratories, look it up, do a little Wikipedia search, and you'll find all kinds of interesting things that have been discovered by Bell Laboratories. The Bell Telephone Company was looking for ways of transmitting the human voice over long distances in the most efficient manner. And what they discovered was that the human ear canal was tuned for freak a very specific frequency response between 1,000 and 5,000 hertz. You can sometimes see that on audio equipment abbreviated as 1K or 5K. And what the K means is just multiply by 1,000. It's the metric system. Maybe a topic for another video. And that is a, an evolutionary thing that has happened over millions of years going back to our hunter-gatherer caveman days when we were hunting it's very important for humans to be able to communicate effectively with each other it's a matter of survival right so um, our ears have developed over millions of years to be highly sensitive to the human voice obviously let's test that theory right now let's have a look at what we have here some of the toys that we have. This is a um, ICO audio signal generator. This is a very old piece of gear. This is tube driven equipment. It's very hot right now. Uh, there's a bunch of tubes in here. It's very old so it's not super precise but one of the great things about this audio generator because I've got lots of them down here is that this one is able to drive this organ speaker. Uh, that's going to become very handy here. And then, of course, we've got an oscilloscope here. We've got that hooked up to the output of the signal generator right now. And, well, let's have a look, look at this. We can switch between a sine or square wave with this button here. We've got various bands that we can select that will select these different bands here with which different frequencies and with this dial here you can select different frequencies so let's say for band A starts all the way at 0 Hertz 20 Hertz all the way up to 200 Hertz and then band B is from 200 let's see all the way to 2000 cycles per second band C is from 2000 because K means thousand all the way up to 2,000, uh, sorry, what am I saying here? Uh, 20,000 cycles per second, or 20K. And then band D gets really crazy. We go 20,000 cycles all the way up to 200,000 cycles per second right there. So this thing goes really low and pretty high um, as far as the audio spectrum is concerned. So I'm changing the frequency by turning this dial here. What I'm hoping to demonstrate is that the actual amplitude of the signal is not changing. Okay, so if we sweep this, the amplitude or the strength of the signal is, when I say strength of the signal, I mean the width of this signal. 
is not changing the frequency or the speed of this going up and down that is changing but the actual amplitude or strength of the signal remains constant more or less more or less I mean this is an old piece of equipment so it's not not definitely not perfect okay what we'll do now is we'll take this off the oscilloscope and we're gonna put this on the speaker This, uh, I'm gonna warn you this might hurt your ears so we can change the select the frequency this is pretty fun to play with actually really crazy up here you can't even hear up here let's start right down to uh, the a band here what you're gonna hear is right around here the human hearing starts to drop off we can't really hear much past here uh, and some of these lower frequencies are really hard to hear as well so there's actually a tone there You can see the speaker vibrating if you look really carefully. Oh, there's some dust in there showing you that there's a, a tone, but you, you probably can't even hear that through YouTube. So that is 45, 45 cycles per second. We're going to start to be able to hear this now. 100 hertz, 150 hertz, 200 hertz. By the time we get to here, that's easily audible. Let's turn this back down. Let's go to band B. Now we're starting at 200. Crank it up. One thousand cycles per second. Two thousand cycles per second. Now band C, we're starting at two thousand. Nine thousand, ten thousand, right around here. It starts to get pretty hard to hear. If we go to band D, that's when things get really crazy. Can't hear anything here. Fifty thousand cycles. This is completely out of range of our human hearing, although there is a tone there, we just can't hear it. Now, what, I'm, what you should take from this is that um, although we're, we're putting the same signal in throughout this frequency spectrum, the loudest or where it is perceived to be loudest is right from 1,000 to 5,000 cycles per second. That's just where it sounds loudest to us. As a matter of fact, it sort of hurts. You should find that it, it does kind of hurt your ears through here. And that is because our ears are just most sensitive to that. Let's, let's demonstrate that again. Right around here, on band B right now. You hear that really well. almost 
like just sounds really loud. Okay, to the point where it's like annoying. So, so that is um, basically what the Fletcher Munson curve is all about. It's basically just showing the how the the human ear is particularly sensitive in a very specific uh, frequency range. So uh, I'm just going to do one more demonstration here and I'm going to use a set of walkie-talkies. Alright. Crank her up. Crank it up. Okay. So I'm going to do one more demonstration for you guys. And this is going to use these little walkie-talkies, little, these little two-way radios. We've all seen these. Why do you think all radios, walkie-talkies, and things like this, why do you think they all sound the same? Why do you think that they all sound like this? Let's see, I'll put this one over here. You auto. You, you, you. Hey, hey, hey. What am I doing wrong here? Hello, hello. You Ottawa. You, you Ottawa, Scotty. You Ottawa, Scotty, coming in, coming in. You Ottawa, Scotty, coming in. Loud and clear. This is Taipei Tiger. Come on in. Radio check. Okay, so that's... That is what you know that that's what walkie talkies sound like all the time and the reason why they sound like that is because they are trying to transmit the human voice in a very efficient way you know there's no point in in transmitting all of the information or audio information that is useless right this is not this the, the main point of these things is to be intelligible uh, and to be able to understand what the other person is saying and and in order to do that this thing here doesn't care about anything below 1000 hertz or above 5000 hertz this primary frequency range that these things are broadcasting and in order to be power uh, efficient is within the Fletcher Munson curve and that is why two-ray radios and um, you know like walkie-talkie communications always sound like that hello you auto Scotty coming in coming in you auto Scotty <clears throat> so, so yeah so hopefully that was an interesting video I hope you uh, learned something and uh, we're actually gonna springboard off this video into another video talk about some other interesting concepts based on this video so i hope that explains what the fletcher munson curve is if you want to know more about it just do a little quick wikipedia search quite an interesting topic and thanks for hanging with you auto scotty look forward to seeing you in the next video see you soon